Hi, my name is Nancy LT Hamilton and welcome to my fabulous studio. Oh, it's really messy actually. Different wig, different day. <laughs> the joy of being a subscriber is you get to see all my different hairdos. <sighs> anyway, um, today we're actually going to do something. We're going to make our own bezel strip and we are going to wrap that around a, a cabochon, which is a flat back stone. And we're going to solder it together and then we're going to put it onto a back plate and it's going to be exciting. In the part two of this video, which is coming a little later, um, you're going to take that bezel cup that you made, solder it onto a ring shank and then set the cabochon. So we'll be covering all those techniques involved with that in video two of this series. So lots to do. So we better get going. Okay, come on. Time to start creating the bezel strip or bezel wire as people call it too. Um, first thing, this is a down and dirty for a, a way to measure your stone, um, especially if you've got an unevenly shaped stone. This will give you a rough estimate on how much metal you need to cut initially. So I just start at the one point, you can do this with round or any other shape, and just roll it along its length. By the way, this is polymer clay that I'm rolling into and you want to come back to where you started from as far as the positioning on the stone. So this measurement here, which is about 44 millimeters, um, will be my basic length, but I always like to add more material onto this. So I probably would make this 45 millimeters. Uh, adding a, a one millimeter for if I have to adjust the ends if they're not square. Um, and then on our height on our stone, we need to know that because we need to determine the height of the wall of the bezel. So you want to measure the highest point. Oh, so little and so slippery. And of course, it's on the floor. Come here, bad dog. All right, so let's try that again. So we've got 5.05 .05 for our height. When um, determining the height of the bezel wall, what I like to use is the one third or one quarter format, um, meaning that you want your bezel wall to be uh, one third to a quarter the height of the stone. So I've already done the math here, so you don't have to watch me do it. So I, I usually go with the higher number because I can always take down height of the wall. So I'm going to go with 1.68. Now, if you really want to be precision orientated on this, um, there's a method to do that. And that is to set your calipers to the number you want. Oh, back there. Hard part is getting them line up and then lock it down with this locking pin on your calipers. I like, uh, I always use um, a metal that has a square edge, either one that I've created by dragging along a big file and made it fl flat or using the machined edge that comes with your metal. And so you can just take your calipers and use them as a marking tool, one edge on the outside and drag down along the length of the metal like that. Um, once again, I like to err on the side of making it higher than it needs to be. So what I would probably do is just round this up to an even millimeter number, like two millimeters. So my wall will be two millimeters and that I can either set on my calipers or use my dividers to set the uh, distance on. And also I want to cover the traditional formulas for determining um, on an oval how much material to cut. Once again, this is basically an estimate. It's very similar to using the clay. I just think it takes more work because you have to think <laughs> a little harder and God knows I don't want to waste any energy there. So it's length plus width divided by two and that'll give you an average. And then you take the 3.5, which is a rounded up number of pi. This accommodates for metal thickness. So we're a little more generous than the 
infinity of pi. Um, that makes sure you have enough material. And then I would even add 0.5 millimeter on top of that. The, the waste is minimal and the waste of having to throw the whole thing out is much greater. So for a circle, if you're doing a round stone, you're gonna go diameter times the rounded up version of pi and that'll give you your length, but I'd add five also. Um, in a regular shaped stone, honestly, I think this is the easiest way to, to do that because um, you have to measure all the different, like if you had a vaguely hexagonal shape, you would have to measure all those edges to determine the um, diameter, not diameter, the circumference of the stone. So anyway, so that's enough on measuring and I'm gonna set my calipers and mark my metal by dragging down here just like I did with the digital, use my dividers I mean, or I could use my calipers again and set these to two. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here. I, did, I forgot I was going to mention um, if some people like to make the line easier to see by doing a wide swath of Sharpie and then scribing their line through that Sharpie. Um, this I just tr put my ruler down allowed with extra space for the thickness of the pen tip and marked it. So this is this is the part I'm going to be cutting out here for my bezel strip. And I'm going to be using my French shop shears on this because this metal is very thin and easy to cut with these. When I set up to cut, I want to put the keep the base of the French shop shears tight up against this edge. It helps to cut down on wonky cutting and it just makes it easier to guide down the metal strip. So, oh, this is hurting my hand. Too much yoga today. Okay, and then a clip here. And this is all going to be adjusted down the road, which I'll be showing you. So here's the bezel strip for our little oval cabochon. So I'm going to anneal this because it's very stiff right now. Way too hard to bend. It should be much easier. I should be able to do most of this by hand. So I'm going to anneal and I will meet you here again. So I like to um, flatten my wire out a bit. Try not to bend the walls of the bezel wire over. just because it gets wonky from the cutting process. I also grabbed a little X here so I know which side is my uh, flush side, machined edge, but I can tell also because I have these scribe marks up here. Um, I can go with the natural curve of this. Um, it just means I have a little cleanup on the outside from the scribe lines. Now when we do this, we want to try to get the, the seam on the side on an oval. On a circle, it doesn't matter because it's all the same. But you want to pick a long side. And one of the reasons is for doing this is that when you get these tight ends here and then you add solder to it, the metal is really compressed from the curve. And then you add solder on top of that and you're making it extremely hard to bend over. The, when you're doing the setting. So it's best to put your seams on your side for um, your ovals. And you want to get this right in the first place or it'll just drive you nuts from there on afterwards. So I'm going to try to put this in the middle, one wall in the middle, and then start pushing the metal over. This is way too long, but that's kind of what I wanted. I'd rather cut away metal than to try to have to go stretch it out again. So I'm going to trim this mark, this part in here a little bit because it's interfering. So I'm just going to ch chop off a chunk real general at this point. All right. 
Now there's two methods. Oh, really? Oh my God, you're as bad as a cat. Very annoying on the floor. Um, like we're going to bigger stones a lot better. So you can push most of this. You can do with your hands. If you, if you have arthritis or other issues, you can always use half rounds to shape. This is a big, big girl pair. And um, if you're going to shape inner curves, like say you have something even smaller than this, use your round nose for the tight, tight end curves if necessary. And they make these in varying uh, sizes. So unless you've got a whole set of them, you can adjust it just with the round nose and this. And there's also bezel mandrels, but trying to find an oval bezel mandrel that actually matches the size of your oval can be extremely difficult because the ovals come in a variety of different shapes. There's long ovals, there's wide ovals, you know, there, and every variation in, in between. So at this point, what I can do, so that I'm mentioning briefly the two methods. One is you, this can save you work, um, but usually I find I have to adjust it twice anyway, but you can draw a line where, where the two metals overlap. You can mark here and I would also mark across the top so you can line them up again and then see how they're not together now. So if I line those two up, I would probably put a little piece of tape on either side of it to hold it in place. And then you would saw that. Um, I generally, tend to mark where the interior wall is against this outer wall and then draw a line down and then I'll trim on the right side of this line and what I end up having to do of course then is I have to square my edges up the sawing method usually you don't have to do as much squaring but this is, I don't know why, I, I think this, I end up doing as much work, but either way. So then I, you have to flatten this out again. And while you're doing it, this wall tends to be, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bowed. So I, at, at this point, take the opportunity to walk around with a flat pair of flat nose and flatten that wall out and taking tiny incremental steps around the outside of the bezel strip. And you can actually go ahead and hammer at this point too if you really got a, a decent bow in there because you really don't want to have that happening so i next step is i need to go use my miter cutting vise jig and square these edges up and when i put it into the miter cutting vise i'm going to use this machined edge up against the pin i have a video on how i think i have a video or i have something about this i'll put a link and um, I also have some information on my web page about this on how to use the miter cutting vise. So I'm going to go square up my edges and then meet you back here. So it took a bit of fussing. I had to go trim this one more time and anneal it twice to get it to fit. I ended up, I forgot I had these. These are little bezel mandrels. Um, and this helped a bit with it, but I, the walls are a little too rounded, so I had to flatten them with the flat nose. There was a lot of futzing involved, and this certainly did not take two minutes for me to do. Uh, it was more like 10. So anyway, it's tight enough. It might be even a little snug. If I push this down, I have a, a pretty good fit. It's just not really compressed completely. So what I'm going to do um, is go ahead and solder this. Um, even though I have a hair of a gap, um, I can always stretch this out a little bit and it would be good for me to even show you that. So what I'm looking for on this fit over here is I'm lining up my machined edge edges at the bottom it's because you can see it's slightly off. This side is a little thicker on this strip width, which is not an issue. Um, so I want to have, I want to make sure that I'm not like this. So I can do this to get a spring on it and to adjust the fit on it. And I can also flatten it with the flat nose. 
I also I don't want a gap like that on the top either so it needs to be lined up on both directions on the base it needs to be even and it needs to be even across the top so I need to put my optimizers on to do this so I'm gonna do that it privately and then I'll meet you at my soldering area okay so I've fluxed my bezel I'm going to heat up the flux so that it doesn't boil my pallions off. Whoa, that was explosive. I don't think I've ever seen that. It. it was really thick. It's from yesterday, so that's probably why it's doing that. All right, so I'm gonna, I've already got a pallion of um, hard solder. I'm gonna put it across the seam. It's not exactly where I want it, but it should work. I'll use the heat to draw it towards me. I've got a little heat sink here in the cro cross lock, so I'm going to heat them up. That way the heat won't run away as fast because that silver is such a great transfer of heat. Take both sides evenly. There we go. Talk that solder into going in the right place. So, um, now I'm going to pickle it, and then I'm going to check my fit. Now if you need to, I will do a hair of stretching on a uh, bezel mandrel. While I'm waiting for my bezel to get cleaned in the pickle, I wanted to just briefly run over um, something that I think is rather important. Let's pretend this is our bezel strip. This would also hold true for this, for making a ring. Um, after I've squared my edges, I have a little burr that runs along this edge on on all four sides now you have to be very careful that when you're when you're cleaning those burrs up you don't do it like this because you end up cutting a draw on here so this is how it should be and if you file or sand those burrs off at an angle what you'll end up getting is this kind of little valley that's created here um, and to level it out again, all this material up here has to be removed. This is slightly exaggerated, by the way, but I hope you understand what I mean. And um, so I'm used, when I do this, I put the piece flat and drag, this is a sanding foam, and I drag it flat across the sanding thing so that I don't accidentally create that kind of wedge shape in there. Also, I do my sanding while it is in the miter cutting jig. Um, that way it just, I, it's finished um, and and I make sure that I don't accidentally fi uh, sand something uneven. So I just leave, I do my filing. I use a larger file, like a Havilah's file and then I switch to something like an escapement file, which is a file that's smaller than a needle file um, to do that. And then I'll go in with the sanding material and further finish it off. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt the block at all. So just a little tip and I'm gonna go check that bezel now. So I just wanted to show you this briefly. See this side? So I know I've had questions about this. See how white it is? And then if I turn it over here, it's not, it looks like silver again. This is actually fine silver that's on the surface. It's easily removed if you don't want it, or you can be used, you know, like this as, as a really white piece. I actually like the color a lot myself and have employed it in my designs. So we've got our seam here. It's soldered, I hope. We'll find out when I put the stone in it. And I'm gonna push the stone on in, I mean, I mean the bezel on the stone. I, I want to check the fit from both directions, so I'm going to flip the bezel over and then put the stone in again because I want to make sure that my walls are parallel on both sides. You don't want a bezel that's shaped at this angle. So at this point, what I can do is I can try rolling it along a polished steel block like this to have the shape more perfectly aligned with the stone or I can use a burnisher 
and rub it along the edge. Now if I did need to stretch this, which I don't, I could put it on a mandrel and I could try, see how it's not quite the same shape as this, I could try first with a leather mallet to stretch it a little bit, but if you need to stretch it a lot, you will need to use a steel hammer on your bezel man mandrel and you'll probably have some cleanup to do um, due to the the marks that the hammer will make but if possible sorry I'm reaching for a hammer you want something with a really pretty shiny finish on it if you're going to be doing this so you have less chance of putting the marks that are on the hammer onto the metal so um, I'm going to finish shaping this up there's a couple of areas that are I'm not thrilled with with the, the symmetry of them and um, I'll be back so we've got our bezel shaped um, I want to make sure that it fits in and out from both sides like I already discussed you can just slide it through if it slides through you know your fits good you want to make sure that you've got your flush edge down and I would go ahead and take another extra step to make sure that it's actually soldered perfectly flat by running it over a fine file turn it and do it from the other direction and you want to see it all evenly shiny which it isn't there's a spot there that is not so I need to continue to work on this until everything has the same polish on it because if this is at all uneven it's just not going to sit well on the back plate here I thought everything was perfect and of course it's not okay so that's good so now I've got a good even finish on there and the next thing is we need a back plate I'm using a piece of scrap that I heat clean although it doesn't look like it in the camera um, and I also actually it was this side that I sanded and so I'm gonna be I let me start that again I want to make sure that this is flat, really flat. So to do so, I can hammer it on a steel block with a mallet. Sometimes these edges get a little curled up from cutting. Um, and if that's not sufficient, you can do this with a piece of wood over the top of it and whack it. I'm not going to do that. It'll be loud, obnoxious. And I know this is flat. So I, what I want to do is find a place where I have ample area around it. I don't want to necessarily put it right in the middle because I do want to use as much of this scrap as I can, but I want to have sufficient room around it so that it's not too hard for me to solder on. That's probably a good spot. Um, and then I want to pick this up and make sure that I don't see any major... Ir okay, come on. Everybody behave any big giant gaps going around there I want it to look like this so it's nice and flat and smooth if your metal is curved you'll see one end higher than the other or if your back isn't flat you'll have problems too so I'm gonna flux this whole area because my fit is so nice on the stone and I don't want to mess with that what I'm gonna do is place the solder on the floor of the bezel but touching the side here um, and I'll probably put four pieces north, south, east, west on here. So we're going to go get ready for that. Yeah. As far as the gauge for the back of the metal, of the bezel, um, that depends on if it's going to be like floating partially in the air, like going across a ring band. Um, you might want to have a heftier metal, maybe use a 22 gauge or 20 even. Um, if it's going to be soldered onto another piece, you could probably do 26 gauge on the back of it. Um, it just, it depends on the design. So I've flexed everything, so I'm going to heat it up, but I'm going to have my handy um, soldering pick with me, and I'm going to hold this down gently, and the flux is going to act like a glue and adhere the bezel to the back plate. And this doesn't work unless you have a good fit already. Okay, so now I'm ready for solder application. By the way, I learned the other day, and I did not know this, um, that 
if you ball up your solder, there's a great chance that what you're doing is burning out some of the zinc, which is one of the additives in your solder, with along with copper and hopefully no cadmium. You don't want solder with cadmium. Anyway, um, I digress. So you want to have, you don't, if you ball up your solder and then like pick apply it, uh, what happens is that the zinc gets, can get burned out of the solder and will reduce the chances of the solder flowing. So if you've been having issues with solder flow, try not balling up your solder if that's what you've been doing. So at this point you can move on to medium solder if you want or continue to use hard. If you're a beginner I would recommend going to medium because it melts at a slightly lower temp and I don't know if I've mentioned this but you need to make sure that your flux also your solder also has flux on it. So that's why I use a brush. I dip into my flux and make sure that I coat both sides. God, those are such big pallions. I don't even know if I'm going to need four. I don't usually work with pallions this big, but I was working on a bigger piece. And these were already cut. Let's see if I'm going to pay for that with a lot of cleanup later. I hope not. Okay, so remember I said I'm placing these on the floor one side touching the wall. Now at this point I can move this to my enameling trivet and so I can heat from underneath. Ideally we're not going to touch that um, bezel with the torch because it's so thin and small in comparison to the back plate so most, almost all the heating is going to be done on the back plate. So getting it raised up and, and allowing you access to the back side is not a bad idea. Try not to aim the torch anywhere near my iPhone. No red that's getting. And this uh, trivet is acting a little bit as a heat sink, but not much. So I'm going to get up here and try to drag that solder that has melted around the perimeter of the bezel. With any luck, that worked. I'm going to show you a trick on how to check that after I pickle this. So now it's... Um, the back plate's soldered on and I want to check the fit of the stone to make sure everything is working right. So um, I do the, I cut two long pieces of dental floss and tape them to the back and that way if the stone fit is really tight I don't get my stone stuck in here and have to rip the bezel off which would be the worst case scenario. Um, you can twist this and then wrap it around your finger and pull it out or if it's really tight you can use pliers. If you do get your stone stuck there is the possibility of um, while the stone is in place and if you're very careful drilling a little hole in the back and popping the stone out the deal is you know if this is going to show and you don't want it showing um, let's say a translucent stone or something you could always put a uh, mylar or tin foil or even a thin thin piece of silver uh, in here and then put your stone on if your walls are high enough to accommodate the metal. Um, you can also pierce out the back you know and let's say it's you don't like this and you, and you do want to have something fancy you could just draw a little pattern on here just leave sufficient material so that the bezel walls still have something strong and if you're gonna if you are gonna pierce it out I would use a heavier gauge metal rather than a thinner I wouldn't use you know 24 or anything like that it all depends on the design on how you and how you deal with it I mean it's it's a crapshoot there so um, I'm making this weird little ring band kind of 
looks like sperms. I, I know, I didn't plan it that way. Um, but I'm gonna sweat solder this onto this shank. So I'm thinking I might do this little cutout of a leaf shape here, which I'm gonna have to do two layers because this metal isn't thick enough to hold it up. I get somebody could nail it, hit it really easily and bend it on the ring. So um, basically what I'm gonna do is trim most of the back away. I think this metal's thin enough to use the shop shears. And I wanna trim it close to the bezel wall without actually digging into the bezel, which I have done before. And you can do this after you pierce it out, saw it out, whatever you're gonna do with it. I'm just gonna leave sufficient metal to hold on to. I think I'm gonna leave that flange thing too. And just, you know, trim it as close as you can and then we'll go and I'll show you how to clean it up with files. I may not leave that leaf just because it's going to be pain, pain to finish, but <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll make a decision later. I'll get rid of this. I'm going to get that a little closer. And I am not going to pierce out the back because this is a pretty wide band. You wouldn't even see it. So I might put it that way too, actually. And then you wouldn't see it at all. Um, so I'm going to go and saw out the leaf shape, make a decision, and then we'll start filming a little bit of the filing. I forgot to mention that if your metal is too thick to use shears or you don't have them, you can always pierce around the bezel with um, a jeweler's saw. So... Anyway, uh, one of the methods I use, and it's going to be really hard for this, it's going to be impossible for me to do it on this side, but I can probably pull it off over here. I'm going to do the roll method, where I start and turn my hand like this and drag along a pretty rough file, focusing the push on the outer, on this edge, so that I don't tear up the bezel wall. So I just roll on that until I get most of this out of control. Or if I need to, I can always put this in my vise, GRS vise, or a, um, a ring vise, and then file along these edges. And if you know if you're not doing any stuff like a fancy backplate or anything, you can just. Um, what was I going to go with that? Oh my God. <laughs> You just want to file it so that you no longer have any kind of lip hanging off here. And then you go into your finishing with sandpaper. Um, and at that point, you'll clean up any solder that you had left over on the outside, if you do have any. Um, and I'm going to finish this up by doing that. And then I'll show you when it's done. Because it's really boring watching somebody file especially since I don't have my clamp here and I can't stand up and do it and blah, 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 blah. So give me a couple minutes. Well, I'm allowed to change my mind. I thought, what the heck, why not show you what I'm doing? So in this case, because of this silly leaf that I had to put on here, I'm using the GRS clamp and a pretty rough file. It's a little more controllable with this smaller one. And then I'll move it. And then, so I'll go from a rough file to a medium file and to a fine file. And just take this edge down without destroying bezel wall. Okay. That's it for now. So here it is um, down to fine filing. Lots of burrs on this back side here. I've taken some off but boy it still needs to be cleaned up. Um, I'm going to use sanding discs, silicone wheels and things like that for finishing after I solder a little leaf shape. Then I'm going to trace on another piece of metal, you know, this kind of thing. And then 
sweat solder them together and um, finish that. But anyway, I forgot to tell you my trick for testing if your bezel is groovy or not. So after you take it out of the pickle and before you do this step, <laughs> um, what you want I do is I fill the bezel cup with water and I wait a second or two and if there's any water leaking out on the metal around the bezel you've got a problem. Um, this is after visually checking it but sometimes you, you don't know. I mean it can be a pinhole and any little gaps in the bezel wall can really cause problems down the road when you're putting all these forces on the bezel wall setting it you can actually tear up the bezel which I have done too. I've done most of these mistakes, which is why I know about them. So, um, yeah, so, so test your bezel. Fill that little thing up with water and make sure it doesn't leak. It's a simple way to save yourself some pain. Well, here we are in our last steps of this project of making the bezel cup. Um, I actually finished this already. I filmed earlier, but I the video is really bad, so I'm not going to show it to you. So I'm just going to talk about this. So in determining how high and to give me some kind of markers for how, how how much to, to file off on this bezel wall, which was way too high, um, I want to drag my digital calipers along the base and leave a scribe mark in the wall. And the calculation is, I go back to my 1.68, which was the third of the height of my stone. I also need to add in the back plate thickness because that is now on there and that needs to be accommodated. Um, so basically I'm rounding it up a little bit again just to give myself some wiggle room. And after I scribe it, I'm, you know, I'm turning, turning these on, <laughs> locking, don't forget to lock it down on the top and then, you know, do your dragging, keep the foot of the, the caliper on the, on the base, the back of the bezel cup. And drag all the way around and then I as you can see these little black dots on here they're just the marks where uh, that make it easier for me to see while I'm doing the filing this is done those are just nothing um, so anyway you want to file this down uh, use a you know cross cut or a really rough file and I use the uh, even filing method where I five times this way and then I turn the piece and five times this way um, because you don't put even pressure on your hands when you're dragging. It tends to be more at this end. It depends how you file too. And then go to a finer file and do the same thing, you know, f maybe five times this way, five times this way. While you're filing, you want to check the fit of your stone very frequently. Um, I would say every, you know, maybe every two swipes, not two swipes, but two courses depending on how much you have to remove, of course. If you're only removing a little bit, you need to check it more often than that. But I checked a lot while I was doing it and I'm happy with how this fits in here. It could go, probably go down a hair more, but I don't want to do it anymore. Um, and then when you're done filing, you're going to have, depending on how much material you're going to remove, you're going to have um, burrs along the interior edge of the cup and on the exterior cup of the cup. Um, you can use a um, what's this? Uh, an escapement file. What is this thing? <laughs> Sometimes I just go completely blank. Here's some burrs, by the way, that came off of my piece. You can use a small escapement file and file down this interior edge. Or another method I like is to take a piece of sandpaper and cone it. And this gives the sandpaper a lot of stiffness, so you can come in and really get a hold of things. Mine was, I had so many burrs on here that I had to actually use a file first on the interior and exterior. Um, but you do want to consider your exterior burrs too. And then don't forget to do the face, this ed edge in here by dragging over sandpaper. It doesn't have to be uber finished because we are going to thrash it when we're setting it. Um, it's just, you don't want to leave it really rough and ugly looking. So uh, this is actually done. I did want to talk a hair about stone shapes. This is probably something you should consider before you do uh, the entire project. I'm assuming you're going to watch this first. 
Um, some stones I've seen, some cabochons or whatever you're setting may have a, a very parallel wall. And if you just put your bezel wall up to here, your stone's just gonna pop right out. So you wanna consider covering the rounded edge where it starts to round and with sufficient material that it's gonna hold the stone in stably. Um, you don't wanna have too much bezel wall. You don't wanna have it coming up here because then you're not gonna see any of your stone. So let's see, too little would probably be like this. This is about right around where I drew it over here. Um, and too much is obviously up here. So also you might, you'll, might run into some really low flat cabs. Um, you know, once again, it's, it's a decision you have to make on how much material you're going to, how far up your bezel wall is going to go. So that's that for this video. The next video, we will be soldering the bezel cup onto the ring shank. I'm going to show you how to prep the ring shank for that. And we will be actually setting the cabochon at that time. So I appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much for coming. I swear you're the best student ever. Oh my God. Oh my God. So I really appreciate you spending your time with me. It means a lot. I hope you learned a lot. Um, I have a lot of question and answer uh, pages on my site website that you should check out if you have any questions. So there's also a stone setting area under techniques. So visit the site. Uh, there's a lot to, to impart to you. Um, don't forget to subscribe. It's not hard. You'll get to see all my new hairdos, maybe a cat. <laughs> like the video please just tap on the button helps with our ratings on the tube and like I said visit my website at nancyltHamilton.com you can also check me out on Facebook you can be my friend Nancy Hamilton um, and then I have a business page Nancy LT Hamilton jewelry which is mostly um, it's all jewelry related actually and you can like that page too that'll help um, let's see what else uh, Pinterest I have a huge Pinterest site with everything from eyeglasses to jewelry surprise surprise and I'm on a few other places too that I can't remember right now I also uh, put out a newsletter and I can't say it's monthly or even six monthly <laughs> but there is one and there's a bunch of past episodes that you'll get to see if you sign up and you can do that on my home page I also have a video on craftsy um, and on stone setting and also I have a video on the riveted portrait pendant that's available for a discount if you subscribe to my newsletter so that's that's enough of me babbling and I'm gonna run off and go start making another video Woo! thank you have a fabulous day and don't forget working hard and screwing up is all part of the game if you're not doing it this is not growing not your hair your brain Bye.